Adama Fuseni is checking the condition of his cocoa trees and removing excess shoots. He wants to get his plantation into shape. Important visitors are on their way. A scientist from the State Cocoa Authority has said he'll be coming by today. Uh, are you cool, Mr. Adama? Uh, okay. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. With just a few glances, Amos Kojo Kwai sees what Adama Fuseni has done wrong. For starters, this fruit. A squirrel nibbled on it. The farmer should have chopped it off immediately. Now ants have eaten the cocoa beans and are threatening the other fruits too. And there's another problem. You see this tree? This tree takes a lot of water from the soil. Assuming you cut through the root of it, you see a lot of water coming out of it. You see that during the dry season, although it doesn't shed, it leaves, which means it's very good to provide shade for the cocoa during the dry season. But on the other hand, because it takes too much water from the soil, it is competing for water and nutrients with the cocoa plants. The fact that the soil's water balance could be a problem is new to Adama Fuseni. He only thought about the shade his cocoa plants needed. He learned about shade from his father, Orlando Osmanu, a cocoa farmer who rehabilitated his farm with the support of a Dutch NGO. When he saw his father's farm taking off, he decided to quit his job as a teacher. Now I can see a lot of improvement. Actually, my father is able to get food to feed the family, and then some of the food that he sells, he's able to get money from there, some small income to support the family in one way or the other. And now I'm even attracted to go into food farming. It usually takes a young cocoa plant seven years to bear fruit. In order to bridge the time until the first harvest, Adama Fuseni initially bought three cows. Today, he has a herd of 17 animals. Initially, I was discouraged when I was about to go into farming because some of my colleagues were even laughing at me. But ever since I started, things have now improved. I'm able to get a little income from the cocoa farm and then with this cattle too, if I'm selling, then maybe life could get better for me in the near future. Back to the cocoa farm. Amos Kocho Kwai examines the ripe cocoa pods. It's Atama Fuseni's first harvest. The scientist divides the fruit into three groups based on quality. This also lets yeah, him make right. predictions for future yields. Uh -huh. Okay. A local bag weighs about 64 kilograms. So if he's able to get about eight of them uh, from next year onwards, as the farm ages, we can project that the farm is going to do very well. However, Adama Fuseni can only achieve this goal if he manages his farm flawlessly. Amos Kojo Kwai shows him how the trees have to be pruned so that all the energy goes into fruit production. And he warns against the use of pesticides. close to the tree. Now we have told the cocoa farmers in Ghana not to use weedicides anymore because the weedicides were destroying the soil. It's what was making the soil heavy. It was killing microorganisms. That makes the soil loose and, and good. Instead, he recommends applying compost. A facility is being built just a few kilometers away. Production is scheduled to start here in just a few weeks. And the developers have come up with an interesting payment model for the farmers. The farmers that will pick the cocoa house from their farm will have subsidized uh, price. Yes, and we also have a uh, flexible mode of payment across the cocoa season. Because I know you guys have money during the cocoa season and we need to do it in such a way that at that time they can pay. And during the off season too, they can have the product. Fertilizing the soil with compost alone is not enough though. Climate change is presenting cocoa farmers in Western Ghana with new challenges. Because of drought, this farmer waters his 12-acre farm by hand every week. I want to sustain the cocoa, otherwise it will die because of the hammer time. Adama Fuseni's father has it easier now. The Dutch NGO SNV drilled a borehole on Orlando Osmano's farm and installed a drip irrigation system, a pilot project for the region. Mm -hmm. 
Some people from SNV installed this water pump for me. It was free. I didn't pay anything, not one city. I didn't have to worry about food or where the workers would sleep. When they were finished, they just handed me the solar machine. I never would have expected anything like that. When I asked for an estimate of the costs, I was told $21,000. I wouldn't have been able to come up with that even if my family had sold everything. Orlando Osmano has to take care of the maintenance of the well and give some of the water to his neighbors. By using this irrigation system, the cocoa can grow and ripen all year round, and production can be increased by up to 50%. If I have access to loan or any <clears throat> financial support or assistance, I'll be very happy to have one in my farm. Since without this irrigation system, cocoa farming becomes very difficult. In the capital, Accra, the state cocoa regulator Cocobod knows irrigation is critical. Officials want to increase annual yields by 50,000 tons to a total of 1.5 million tons without clearing more jungle and without using boreholes. Boreholes during the dry season, it doesn't yield much. This time we are going to use streams and perennial water sources, streams, rivers. So we have located those areas and we are going to do for now 4,000 hectares. Around 500 kilometers away in Nsovacron, Adam of Husseini's home village, the farmers are discussing how they can benefit from the program. Anyone wanting an irrigation system from Kokobad has to pay back the costs over a number of years, which can be a big challenge for one individual. All of our youth here, those are cocoa farmers, I suggest that they should put out themselves into groups. It will help us creating a cooperative. But until then, Adama Fuseni is trying to get as much out of his plantation as possible. He's been given compost and hopes his trees will continue to be strong and healthy.